So going back to this website, uh, so far what I have posted here is essentially the uh, uh, some highlights. Uh, usually I actually post this portion uh, like in the second or third week of class, but like I said, since we have plenty of online students, uh, I would like to introduce uh, those things early on so every, everyone gets a uh, head start uh, early and uh, is on the same page. So uh, semester project is going to be the focus of our attention here. Uh, semester project, like I said, has to be designed from, from ground up and then uh, it needs to be implemented and documented and we will have uh, iterative uh, review sessions with students to go over your progress and so you can get my direct feedback regarding what's happening and uh, obviously more detail on this to follow. Uh, take a look at business requirements. Today I am not going to go through uh, any uh, details about this. I just want you to read this and if you have any questions uh, let me know. Uh, you can email me at this point and I should be able to respond with my comments, suggestions or, or uh, otherwise. So this is a, a set of requirements uh, that uh, we need to be working on this semester. So you can see this is fairly uh, long uh, description of uh, um, a software system and I would encourage you so that you start reading it and maybe you should already start thinking what you could do with your skills right now uh, uh, to plan on implementing it and uh, uh, working uh, on this project uh, so that you can make some progress. Again, today I am not going to discuss any details of it, but I posted it there with encouragement that you can get there and read um, the, uh, uh, the information. So there are three sets. So this is what's called business requirements. You could see that this was uh, plain uh, uh, English dis uh, discussion description of a system um, how accurate or how good it is is it up to uh, that's up to us to discuss in the future uh, but uh, I would uh, encourage you to read this uh, semester project development guidelines so semester project sounds like this is an activity which will take over the entire semester uh, more or less accurate because what's going to happen is that we're going to form some teams uh, that uh, uh, that will be working together on this project. So um, just uh, get familiar with each other, like get uh, get to discuss those things, and at some point, uh, maybe a week, two, three weeks from now, I would encourage you that you form teams. And what teams mean is that perhaps two or three students. Two is ideal in terms of productivity, but if you're really comfortable working with more than two people, uh, three people is fine. Uh, you will have to uh, submit uh, your team uh, names um, and I will approve it and we will formalize it um, uh, later on. So, but ideally two students per team. So this is really productive because you can uh, bounce ideas off of each other, discuss uh, what, uh, what you should be doing and uh, essentially uh, working uh, on uh, you know, specific parts of it uh, and that's, uh, that's an ideal situation. You can also work alone. Okay, if you choose to work alone, you're simply going to end up doing more work and you're probably going to lose some fun because uh, software design is usually a teamwork activity, uh, at least two people. It's a, it's a fair, very nice type of uh, uh, team to, uh, to work with and uh, uh, you, I would encourage you that you do not work alone, but if your situation is that you just simply, your schedule doesn't permit to uh, meet with teammates or, you know, come together, arrange some meetings to, to do things, then uh, you can work alone, right? But you simply end up doing more work because you could, uh, you know, uh, uh, take turns in, in completing certain portions of it and review each other's uh, uh, work uh, in that manner. 
All right. So uh, moving on, uh, it, just read the, the rules and suggestions here. But uh, generally speaking, I'm not going to interfere with uh, with your with your progress. Uh, like I said, we're going to have set some milestone uh, milestones at which we will meet. Uh, you will show me what you have done so far, and I will give you my feedback. Right. So I'm not going to. Uh, uh, interfere with with your uh, uh, iterations or work on a on a weekly basis. You're completely on your own. Decide what the priorities are, what's important, and start start working on it. All right. So more details about this as we get closer to the to the to the actual um, uh, to the actual milestones. Uh, but this is uh, something that I would like to highlight, something I refer to a project portfolio. Project portfolio is just simply a set of everything that this project has. If you have diagrams and you've used some diagramming tool, that's part of your portfolio. If you've written a document, and saved it in, uh, you know, in LibreOffice or Microsoft Office format or PDF format, whatever you're using, that's part of the portfolio. So to me, uh, if you ask me what portfolio is, it's a folder that you keep together, that you keep accumulating everything that you do, and later on, the actual project, the actual code that will also be part of your portfolio. And of course, your responsibility is to back it up, preserve it, and perhaps have multiple copies of it so that you don't lose it in the middle of, uh, you know, uh, in the middle of the semester, uh, because that will be a significant problem. It's really uh, a work that builds up incrementally from the day you actually starting to, to the last day when you actually present what you have done. Uh, in, in with this project, right? So project portfolio is simply a folder someplace where you just keep accumulating things and preserving the copy, backing it up, having multiple copies of it. Uh, I usually keep copies of my work on every computer I have uh, and uh, uh, also on some backup drives that I have and that's pretty much the way to go. You can always work the cloud services, you know, uh, Google Drives, uh, Microsoft uh, Space, and so forth, right? So, so that's it, and uh, um, uh, it's important to learn how to manage the portfolio when you have multiple members of the team, right? So it actually, if you're working with a team, that the entire team uh, uh, has ownership of this portfolio. So then, of course, every, uh, of course, every single one of you should have a copy of the portfolio and care about it being up to date. So if someone working, uh, uh, you know, maybe at the implementation stage, you can decide that, oh, I will write a piece of user interface and you can work on a set of business objects. And at some point we're going to, like, at the end of this week, we can integrate our uh, work, uh, put it together, and test it together, and once we uh, satisfied that it's actually a working solution to date, then we both, or more than two people, get the same copy and preserve it, uh, right? Because uh, I will be asking you to submit the work individually. When you, when you submit your work for grading, I will be asking every single student to submit, uh, regardless whether you're part of the team or not. Uh, if you have any questions right away, ask me. Uh, just raise your hand and, and ask me a question. So highlights of these ideas uh, uh, are listed here. So uh, obviously, um, we will have scheduled reviews, and we will discuss this uh, um, just uh, in, in a second. Um, uh, I actually am going to update these dates. They, those dates may be off a little bit, because uh, this may be like plus minus one day. I haven't finalized it. So, um, but the, 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 uh, the, this outline should give you a pretty decent idea regarding what I'm expecting you uh, to do and where your progress should end up on, you know, on or around these dates. 
So first, we need to decide what the development teams are, or if you're going to work individually, you will notify me. There will be a link to tell me what's your decision or what 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 team you're joining. And so we're going to manage that at the beginning. Uh, then we're going to work on functional specification for our requirement uh, documentation. So basically, functional specification will be describing exactly uh, everything what the system does. So this is a description uh, of, the, of the software system. So we have a business description so far of that, uh, of that proposed semester project. And you will translate that description into functional specification. Of course, we will discuss functional specification structure, uh, what should be included, and uh, what are good uh, guidelines for uh, writing uh, that specific uh, type of document, uh, and that's going to be our first uh, our first model that we're going to design the requirements model. Uh, importance of it is is very high, uh, very high importance of this model. Uh, midterm exam is simply a take home uh, set of challenges, answer some questions. Uh, this is uh, uh, essentially uh, uh, practice, uh, practice run around the skills uh, to uh, work with the requirements. Uh, and that is going to take us all the way to spring break, okay? And then uh, after the spring break, we're going to do some review sessions. Uh, then uh, we're going to switch over and actually use UML, Unified Modeling Language, to uh, do uh, system design. Uh, basically provide a uh, structure uh, that we're going to be uh, using uh, to base our um, you know, future software. So we're going to design a set of uh, classes or a set of structures depending what your uh, programming language is. And we're going to design basically individual objects and uh, uh, make connections, associate them with one another uh, in terms of uh, something we would like to strive for, which is a good design, which is a solid design of software, right? So uh, then, um, uh, so this is going to be in April, and it's going to be submitted, and it's going to be reviewed by me. And we're uh, in some cases, uh, if you did really good work, uh, you don't have to meet with me. If I have a lot of comments to make, uh, then uh, we will probably arrange for a meeting and sit down, and so I can go over things that, uh, that I think uh, are important for you to take care of before you start implementation. Uh, the analysis model is, is, is just an, another iteration where uh, more attention is given to certain parts of the system, uh, something we uh, discuss uh, also early on in the requirements model, uh, which is a set of use cases. So this is uh, a chance to uh, revisit the use cases and uh, prove that they're uh, correctly designed. Uh, and then there will also be uh, an uh, end-term uh, exam, which is also a take-home set of challenges. Uh, write some, uh, some answers to some questions and to some challenges. And then eventually the code implementation uh, and then project review sessions where you basically come in. This is going to be our format for our final exam that we'll all come in, uh, schedule times, and uh, uh, present what we have done. Uh, you may choose to present at the podium and present it to the entire class, or you may choose to present it privately, and I'll just sit down with your team or you individually, and you will show me on your laptop or desktop in the classroom, uh, whichever uh, you want to use um, to, uh, uh, to demonstrate what you have done. Right, but there will be essentially a review, and this is going to be done at the official final exam time, whenever that is scheduled for this class. And so this is uh, specifically project uh, milestones, um, where we want to uh, get things done by the time uh, we complete our course. Uh, 